Hello and welcome to another installment of Metallic Reviews, the show where I take an honest look at the harder, heavier side of music and give it an honest rating. Today, we're diving back into the metalcore world to examine a new album by an absolute mainstay. Yes, it's The Devil Wears Prada and their new one, Color Decay, released September 16th on Solid State Records. Now, this is a band that's been around since 2005 and are now on their eighth studio release with a, a few different labels. It's their first one since 2019's The Act, which received some fairly excellent reviews. Can they follow up that success? Let's find out. Now, this album, if I could describe it, is what would happen if modern day Asking Alexandria collided with knocked loose style hardcore and got whipped around in a blender a bit. I know that sounds a bit on the weird side, but it actually, it works out. It's pretty cool. There's a ton to enjoy about this record, starting with the atmospherics of it all. The production takes a bit of a wall of sound approach, packing a ton into smaller areas in order to maximize its effectiveness. Now this style of semi-on-the-nose, semi-not-quite-as-blunt production is found throughout Metalcore, but the Devil Wars Prada use it in a particularly interesting way here. For instance, on the song Broken, right after the bridge, there's this very neat choral bit that plays behind a soundscape created by guitarists Jeremy DePoister and Kyle Cypress. It's a nice touch that supports the main pillar offered by the band at large. And that's just one example. It's all throughout this record. Now, some might find it annoying, but I definitely don't. It just adds to the overall beauty of the album. Another thing I love on here are the vocals. Mike Hranica's rougher, hardcore-style vocals fit perfectly with a lot of the thematic matter on the album. Emotionally speaking, there's a lot of push and pull here, and Hranica places vocals that match perfectly with the push. Then, when there's that pull aspect of it, the cleans come back in, backed by Cypress and keyboardist Jonathan Gehring. All of this is excellently performed and swirls about the listener, offering both comfort and concern as they make their way along this musical journey. In terms of songwriting, the album has some of the best metalcore of the year so far. Chomping guitars throw themselves against simple yet punchy drumming and craft a pretty unique soundscape. It's not the technical, really hard breakdown field stuff of bands like August Burns Red or Norma Jean, yet it doesn't really need to be. It's obvious that the focus here is supposed to be on the lyrics and the story that they're telling. The song around it is a vessel, and it's one that the band, for the most part, have built to near perfection. I really appreciate the lyrical vulnerability on here. In a genre that's so often plagued by a sense of almost plastic self-strength, it's nice to see a band put a ton of emotional transparency out there. Again, there's a lot of spots on here where there are those peaks and valleys in terms of lyricism. Now that's interesting for me, considering the idea that other metalcore groups so often focus on pushing through pain and making ways for oneself. Now I'm not saying that that's not important, but I also believe that relatable writing concerns itself with the entirety of the emotional spectrum. This album is a prime example of that. In terms of negatives from the album, there aren't that many. It does get a little weird because the band kind of goes more along the lines of experimentation towards the end of the album. The song 25 drops the catchy choruses and thunderous songwriting in favor of something a little more personal. Yet again, due to the lyrical content, I can't really fault them for that. The next song, Fire, is almost devoid of the metalcore in favor of a more electronic approach. Now this would work better if Hranica focused more on his cleans and less on the rough stuff. But all in all, the Devil Wears Prada have put out a very good metalcore record. There's a ton of atmosphere, some excellent songwriting, and a lyrical transparency not often found in this genre. It's nowhere near the most technical nor the most absolutely musically proficient, but again, it doesn't really need to be. The lyrics are the obvious focus here, and I appreciate that. Will it get on my album of the year list at the end of the year? We'll see, but it will definitely be in the running. It gets a strong four and a half out of five. Thanks so much for watching. Click like and don't forget to subscribe for more metallic reviews. Next week, we are taking a sharp turn away from metalcore and entering the epic power metal world as we examine Stradivarius' new album, Survive. I hope you join me. You've been watching metallic reviews where I give honest ratings to honest music, and I will see you all next time.